most disturbing banned YouTube channels. Aye. Why is this guy still allowed when he has an actual FBI warrant and he's on the most wanted list? A woman who adopted seven children and used them to make social media videos oh, we seen is this now one under the arrest. Day. A year later, he has actually been arrested by the police, possibly facing extradition for running a literal cult. Ah! Obviously, not every video on YouTube is cute or funny. Some channels push the limits so hard, they get kicked off of YouTube forever. But what type of content could be so bad that it forces YouTube to ban an entire channel? Let's find out. These are YouTube channels banned for disturbing reasons, part two. As usual, we'll begin with the lighter cases and move on to the more disturbing ones at the end. I'm Visual Venture and you are awesome. The Catch Me Killer. In February 2009, a new channel appeared on YouTube, but their first video was so disturbing that it left viewers feeling disgusted and angry. A man using the- No, I'm not having a new gold starter call. I don't want to be on here, mate. Name Catch Me Killer posted a video saying he was responsible for several unsolved crimes. The YouTuber blurred his face That's and distorted weird. his voice so no one could identify him. That's weird. Then he began his confession. <laughs> He claimed he'd taken the lives of 16 women and hidden the remains. Although he said he was confessing, there was no regret in his voice. Instead, he sounded proud. The end of the video was the worst part. This mystery man issued a challenge to everyone watching. The Catch Me Killer tells viewers, play my game and solve my puzzles and I'll lead you to 16 bodies one by one. He promised to provide a clue. Yo, that is fucked every week until they located the victims saying once all 16 bodies are found you'll know exactly who i am but he also added a warning for the police don't try to chase me don't try to catch me once this video went viral on youtube people wondered who this mystery man was was he a real criminal or was this all just a big joke the only way to find out was to play his twisted game it was obvious yeah yo this is like the real life saw bro like who does he think he is this mystery YouTuber knew what he was talking about. Every clue he gave was connected. Wait, 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 wait. Before I fucking roast him, he is in jail, right? I'm guessing he's in prison. Because I don't want him to play a game with me. I'm all good. Yeah, I don't want to go missing, bro. I'm all... Yo, yeah, I'll take it back. I wait, is he in prison? He probably is, right? He probably is. Connected to an unsolved case usually involving missing people. I, I don't want to also leave cryptic messages below videos that were talking about certain missing women. He never really stated anything outright, but he would heavily imply that he had some sort of involvement in their disappearance. His first clue was about Tara Grinstead, a former beauty queen from South Georgia. She'd been missing since 2005. Although he didn't say her name, he talked about her past as a pageant contestant. He also hinted that he was responsible for the disappearance appearance of Jennifer Kessie, another missing person from 2006. Since these clues were linked to real cases, the police launched a manhunt to find this mysterious YouTuber. But their only lead was a YouTube video with a blurred face and altered voice. That wasn't much, but it was enough to track him down. Cyber experts identified the IP address of the computer that posted the video. They yeah, I was gonna say, can't you just track down the video like where it was posted? Traced it to a house in Florida. Hours later, agents stormed the house and arrested the man responsible for the Catch Me Killer YouTube channel. His name was Andrew Scott Haley, and he was in his late 20s. The cops thought they caught a criminal. I mean, this guy confessed to taking 16 lives in his YouTube video. The biggest surprise was yet to come, because when they arrested Andrew Scott Haley, they it realized it was all a lie. When Andrew, aka the Catch Me Killer, was questioned, he gave cops a ridiculous explanation. Andrew claimed everything he said in his video was a joke. He said he was playing a game to fool people on the internet. And he was right. Police found nothing to indicate he was involved in any of these disappearances. Yo, you know what though, no chat? Wait, but. Wait, hold up. Hold up, there's a but. Wait, 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 wait chat. There's a but. There's a but. That changes everything, bro. There's a but. There's a but. Chat, what I was going to say though, even if someone was playing that sick game, right? I feel like they're the type of people that would then go and do something. Do you know what I mean? Like, I feel like even though, like, let's say he was lying and he didn't do that, but he was doing that on the internet. I feel like he's like a high chance of actually going and killing someone. 
But that didn't mean Andrew was off the hook. Police spent hundreds of hours and tens of thousands of dollars trying to catch him. This hoax right. wasted public resources and caused real pain to the families of the missing people. Charging Andrew with was charged with evidence tampering and making false statements because his videos disrupted the investigations into these cases. Oh, he was sentenced shit. to two years in a work release jail and several more years of probation. Wait, 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 wait. What, what's a work release jail? What's that? What's a work release program? Jail and several more years of probation. The Catch Me Killer YouTube channel was banned and all his disgusting videos were scrubbed from the internet. But that's not the only YouTube channel Jail banned for faking something. Andrew oh. may have lied about being a criminal, but this next channel allegedly faked something completely different. The loss of a child. The fake pregnancy. Sam and Nia were one of the first couples to create a YouTube channel together. Their channel's name was simple, Sam and Nia. Since March 2007, they've uploaded more than 2,700 videos showing off their marriage and family life. But in 2015, after eight years on YouTube, Sam and Nia's subscribers began to turn on them. And it was all because of a series of questionable videos the couple posted. On August 5th, 2015, Sam uploaded a video called Husband Shocks Wife with Pregnancy Announcement. At first, it seemed like an Exciting moment. You think a YouTube couple share? Wait, 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 wait. How does how does a husband shock wife with pregnancy announcement? Wait, the man got pregnant. Shouldn't the shouldn't the woman shock the husband with the announcement? Not the man, huh? Huh? with pregnancy announcement. At first, it seemed like an exciting moment. You'd think a YouTube couple sharing their pregnancy would get a lot of love, right? But Why there were a lot so of spongy? things wrong with the video. First, the whole idea itself was off. Nia, the wife, never actually took a pregnancy test. Sam, the husband, thought Nia might be pregnant, so he secretly bought a pregnancy test for her. Then he waited for Nia to use the bathroom. Sam then oh. dipped the test into the toilet. The test came back positive, but Nia had no idea it was- How would she not see a pregnancy test in the fucking toilet how would she not see that Sam then dipped the test into the toilet. The test came back positive, but Nia had no idea it was even happening. Sam then filmed his wife's reaction when he surprised what, her with the news that she was pregnant. Did you get a dropper out of the toilet? No, you didn't. I did. No way. Are you serious right now? No way. The couple was excited that they were having another baby, but the reactions from viewers weren't so positive. Many people criticized Sam for conducting a pregnancy test without Nia's consent. Others were skeptical about how valid a pregnancy test from a toilet bowl could be since Nia didn't take another test herself. Wait, yeah, that that do that does sound right in my head, bro. How can you just put a to a pregnancy test in a toilet after someone Yeah, did she not flush? Cuz if she I'm so confused. Nah, no, nah, no, nah, no, nah, no, nah, no, nah. No. Impossible. 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 Did she not flush? It won't work. Pregnancy test from a toilet bowl could be since Nia didn't take another test herself. The and, and, and if she did flush and he, he was just trying to do a diluted test, how does he know she didn't take a shit? Instead, you know what I mean? The whole thing blew up, dividing the YouTube community into those that believed the couple and those that didn't. News outlets contacted doctors to see if the test results were legit, and many doctors said it was not. To defend Sam and Nia, their pregnant fans started posting videos of themselves doing the same thing. They would use their toilet bowls for the pregnancy test and show positive test results to the camera to prove that Sam and Nia were telling the truth. But it wasn't the pregnancy test drama that upset subscribers the that most. Make sense. It was a video posted three days later called our baby had a heartbeat that really hit a nerve I told Nia I said Nia God's ready to use us in a huge way we were so happy just days after the pregnancy announcement video, Sam and Nia shared a heartbreaking update. Their baby was gone. The couple cried as they revealed that they lost their baby. But instead of triggering sympathy, this video only made subscribers angrier. Their problem was that Sam and Nia didn't visit a doctor about the pregnancy or the miscarriage. The couple chose to only consult each other, with Sam saying that he could handle everything since he was a nurse. Their behavior was unusual and subscribers began to distrust the couple. Right 
right after the alleged miscarriage, Sam and Nia started making their daily vlogs again, but they weren't behaving like a couple who just lost the baby. On the contrary, they did things that made subscribers suspect that the miscarriage and pregnancy were both faked. For example, the next day after the miscarriage announcement, they posted a video taking the- Yo, bro, if you really want- Faked. For example- What I don't get yet is if you really want a pregnancy video, for views, then just fuck her. You've already got kids. Just fuck her. Why you gotta fake it? You know what I mean? You want views that bad? Just have another fucking kid. Why you why are you faking it, bro? Cause they don't actually want another one, but they want the views. For example, the next day after the miscarriage announcement, they posted a video taking their kids to Legoland. But instead of paying at the gate, Sam and Nia wanted to get in for free because of their recent viral videos. When that didn't that work, is Sam weird. complained. They want to leverage our viralness, our virality, to get into Legoland. That is weird. I don't think it's right. No, sorry guys. <laughs> he didn't recognize the video. Now we got a bunch of disappointed kids. Instead of taking time... Motherfucker. Motherfucker. Chat, how many views does that pregnancy video have? How many views? Did you say 14 million? 14 million. Did you say 14 million? 19 million. Yeah? You're telling me 19 million views on YouTube, yeah? You can't afford for your kids to go in there. What did you make from that? Fucking 50? 50 grand? Hundred grand. I don't know how long the video was. Okay, buddy. Okay, buddy. Priority to get into Lego Land. I don't think it's right. No, sorry guys. <laughs> he didn't recognize the video. Now we got a bunch of disappointed kids. Instead of taking time to mourn their loss, the couple was trying to get special treatment as YouTube stars. Wait, In the same nice. video, Sam announced that he was quitting his job as a nurse to do YouTube full time. With all these announcements, one after the other, the public suspected that- Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, wait, wait, wait. They got 2 million subs and it's a family channel. Family channels probably get good ad revenue. Yeah, this is, this is a load of bullshit, bro. They can eat- Bro, they're loaded. They're loaded. All of this was calculated They're so that loaded. they could boost the Sam and Nia channel. Sam was quitting his job, which meant that they would lose their main income. However, if their YouTube videos went viral, they could support themselves entirely through YouTube. What was the easiest way to achieve virality? Create a sob story. And things kept getting worse. When BuzzFeed called Sam's workplace to ask if he quit, they said he didn't. According to the employment records, Sam still worked as a nurse in the hospital. Whether that was due to delayed paperwork or because Sam lied, and no one knew. Either way, it looked like Sam deceived his subscribers, hurting his credibility even more. But this was nothing compared to the scandal that was coming next. In July 2015, Ashley Madison, a dating website for extramarital affairs. Wait, 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 wait. Are we off? Oh, wait, no, we're still on the same story? was hacked. This website was made specifically for married couple to secretly cheat on their spouses. Three months later. Wait, 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 what the f Yo, what the fuck? Wait, what the fuck? Yo, I know some people in chat right now are going, What? I never heard of this, but really, you're on the fucking website, bro. Bro, there's a website for you to have. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Life is short, I have an affair. Yo, that is wild specifically for married couple to secretly cheat on their spouses. Three months later, the hackers released the name of tens of millions of people with an Ashley Madison account. Sam's God, name was on that hack. list. If you want to learn more about the Ashley Madison hack, you wait, can- Wait, 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 wait. So now Sam is cheating on his own wife. They're both lying for views. And now he's cheated. Oh my fucking God. This is, this is just, this is a mess. This is a mess. Check out my other video where I cover it in detail. Sam made a video addressing the scandal. As you may have seen, my name has been associated with an Ashley Madison account, a website made for spouses 
who want to have an affair. Um, I'm here to. Yo, this is this is look at this look, bro. <laughs> yo, this look is like yo. If you <laughs> if we don't fucking figure this shit out, you're dead. You're dead, bro. We're gonna be on another YouTube video. Clarify some of this with you guys because I owe it to you. Um, I did make the account. Even though Sam admitted he was on the cheating site, Nia decided to forgive him. The couple stayed together, making content and raising their kids as if nothing happened. Their fans, however, weren't ready to forgive. Sam and Nia acted like a perfect Christian couple. But if Sam was cheating on his wife, then they were hypocrites. With their pregnancy scandal still fresh, Sam and Nia's reputations were damaged. A few weeks later, Sam got into a fight with vloggers who were liking tweets about Sam and Nia's pregnancy and cheating scandals. The fight took place at a vloggers convention organized by YouTube. Sam and Nia were instantly kicked out of the event. Well, we just got kicked out of vlogger fair, guys. Nia's really upset with me. So it was yeah, a couple other people. I made a really stupid rash decision while we were hanging out in the lounge. The next month, their YouTube channel was banned. This was probably because of the fight at the YouTube event and people reporting them for their content. Yeah, I ain't gonna lie. YouTube probably just banned you because, like, your fucking whole channel is just based on load around bullshit, bro. They just, they probably just fucking had enough. YouTube was probably like, we don't even want these on the fucking platform, man. They're doing that. Added. Fight at the YouTube event and people reporting them for their controversial videos. The channel was eventually unbanned, but faced demonetization issues for a while. Sam and Nia have returned to regular uploads now, but there are still people who believe that they shouldn't have a platform. This next channel was banned for doing something I think we can all agree is wrong. Adopting a kid for views. Adopting a kid for clout. Oh, is this fucking woman, bro? Here we go. Here we go. Before we get into this case, I want to point out go. that some of the information is only alleged. A lot of people believe Micah is guilty, but she's always denied the accusations against her. With four kids, a devoted husband, and almost oh. 200,000 subscribers. Wait! This is a different woman! Yo, how many fucking people are adopting you kids for YouTube? It's fucking different woman. Micah Stouffer was living the suburban dream. She was a stay-at-home mom turned content creator. She got her start on YouTube by making videos of her cleaning the house and doing home makeovers. Her husband, James Stouffer, was also a YouTuber. His channel, Stouffer Garage, currently has over 1.3 million subscribers and 200 million views. By early 2017, Micah and James were successful YouTubers, it. but they always wanted more. More views, more subscribers, and of course, more money. That's when they did something that skyrocketed their YouTube views. In October 2017, Micah posted a video called Huxley's Emotional Adoption Video. In it. Yo, chat, what would you guys do if, like, next week I started a new channel, family channel, and I had 20 kids? Would you guys, uh, would you guys, uh, stay supporting? Would you, would you, you join it? Yeah. Yo, people actually fought, bro. People would actually fought. No, you guys would support them because you know that I would actually treat them well. Hey, Vince, appreciate the prime. But listen, I can't do it. Nah, nah, nah. Too much work, bro. Huxley's emotional Hi, adoption video and it went viral instantly. In the video, Micah showed the whole process of adopting a two-year-old boy from China who they named Huxley. He became the newest member of their family, joining their four biological kids. Just weeks after uploading the oh, video, it racked up 5.5 million views, making it the most watched video on Micah's channel. Viewers were hooked on Huxley's adoption story. To capitalize on this attention, Micah and James started a new channel called The Stouffer Life, where they post updates about their adopted son and other family related content wait so far i don't actually think this is that bad so far like i don't think it's that bad like you got four kids maybe they did just want to adopt and be nice and, and ad adopt a kid and their life is on youtube so i don't know it's probably gonna get bad in it. i'm probably gonna eat my words here i'm probably gonna eat my words 
after uploading the video, it racked up 5.5 million views, making it the most watched video on Micah's channel. Viewers were hooked on Huxley's adoption story. To capitalize on this attention, Micah and James started a new channel called That's The Stouffer Stouffer Stouffer. Life, where they posted updates about their adopted son right. and other family-related content. The channel was an instant success. The channel grew from 80,000 to 131,000 subscribers in just that month alone. In addition, their monthly average views went from 200,000 to 2.5 million. What do you want? I'm in the middle of a ball game. By any chance, do you want to adopt a kid? Uh, do I want to adopt a kid? Yeah. Why? No reason. We just want a kid. What What kid? Any kid. Why do I see some glitched little kid on your screen right now? No reason. <laughs> um, are you going to, like, how old's the kid? Why are you asking so many questions? We're just going to make a family channel. Well, I'm not being funny. You want us to adopt a kid? These are the questions that I want to fucking know. We'll get any any kid. We'll, we'll start a family channel and be rich. Oh. Uh, I mean, no, no, no. I mean, I, I mean, we want a kid. Are you going to change its nappies? Oh, fuck, no. It's too much work. So I already failed assignment, bro. I didn't mean to say we'll be rich. I meant to, I meant to say is we want a kid, bro. I've, I've already failed. I, I, I'll, I'll be a terrible liar. Honestly, I'm the worst liar on the planet. I'd be a terrible fucking liar. Loan. In addition, <laughs> their monthly average up. views went from 200,000 to two and a half million. It was what? obvious that Huxley was the real reason for their high views. So Micah started using him to farm likes and increase her subscriber count. You are on my channel and you are here for the Huxley content. Give this video a thumbs up. Every thumbnail included Huxley's face. Every video title used his name and she used him to secure multiple sponsorship deals. Eventually, Huxley became one of the most beloved kids on YouTube. Although things looked good on screen, trouble was brewing behind the scenes. In June, okay, okay, this is where it's bad, bro. Like so far, it's not the worst. And as long as they're treating the kid well and the kid's having a good life and the kid is happy, then all good, right? So far, so far, so far, so far, so far. In 2020, Micah and James posted a video sharing devastating news. Huxley was no longer with them. The last couple months have been like the hardest thing I could have ever imagined going to, choosing to do. After coming to the US, Huxley was diagnosed with several health problems, including autism and a brain tumor. Micah and James said they consulted many doctors about how best to care for him. According to them, every doctor told them Huxley needed a different environment. So they decided the best thing to do was to rehome him and place him with another family. Do I feel like a failure as a mom? Like 500? What do you mean needs another environment? What does that mean? What do you mean another environment? What? So like the shit that was like how that kid was living with them was not good for his health and he knew that? Oh shit. Oh, okay. Okay. So now behind, now behind the camera, now it's fucked. With another family. Do I feel like a failure as a mom? Like 500%. This decision caused a lot of outrage. Some subscribers accused them of abandoning their son. Others believed that since Huxley was adopted, they gave up on him quickly and wouldn't have done the same if he was their biological child. Critics pointed out how they used Huxley to rack up views. After Huxley joined the family, their channels blew up. Michael's channel went from under 200,000 subscribers to- No, chat. Okay, that's fucked, bro. Yo, bro, 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 bro. They've literally just rehomed the kid like he's a pet. I've never adopted a kid, but I feel like when you adopt a kid, you create a bond same as like a biological kid. I've never done it, but I'm guessing so, bro. Like, it'll be very hard to fucking 
lose that kid. Adopted or not, you know what I mean? Like, if the doctor says he needs a different environment, that's, that's your kid. You then change up and be better for the kid, right? If you love the fucking kid. Ah, shit. Shit. It is fucked. Family, their channels blew up. Michael's it channel went from under 200,000 subscribers to nearly 800,000. Now that their channels were successful, many viewers speculated that they didn't need them anymore. Huxley in particular brought so much viewership to their channel. He's kind of the new money maker for Micah. After the video went viral, people started digging into the Stoffer family's past. They found Micah's Facebook posts in adoption groups where she asked questions about Huxley. Some of these posts made it seem like rehoming him was more of a choice than a necessity. Yo. James here, this douchebag face here, hates the fact that Huxley watches him eat. This is supposed to be this kid's father. Okay, if my kid wants to watch me, my kids watch me take a dump. I don't I can't get privacy. I love my kid. A son of doctor from China is very delayed but is obsessed with food. I understand the reason. However, even if he just ate, he always stares at everyone when they eat. You can't eat food without him watching you eat. Even if he has food in front of him. Has anyone experienced this? Has anyone experienced this? Bro, it's a kid. Does it lessen with time? And it drives my husband bonkers. What? He's just watching you eat. Drives you bonkers. <laughs> oh my god. What the fuck? What the... And still, this guy is a total... Angry subscribers dug up old vlog videos where Micah and James seemed frustrated with Huxley. In several videos, they scolded Huxley on camera and treated him differently from their other kids. Well, that's why you don't see on the vlog. He's probably having a meltdown. Are you done? He's just having a bad yourself? day. He's... There were some examples. Wait, that... wait, 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 wait. I'm not judging on that unless I see, like, the comparison with their own kids. Because the way they were talking to the kid then was like, it's not their kid. But do they do they talk like that to their own kids? Because if they don't, that's fucked, bro. That really stood this out. Micah fucked. often criticized Huxley for sucking his thumb. But her feelings about thumb sucking seemed to change when it came to her biological kids. Viewers discovered an old Instagram post from Micah where she praised one of her biological daughters for sucking her thumb. In the post, she thought it was super cute and she said she never wanted her to stop. This was pretty surprising, especially since Huxley was shamed for doing the same thing. The adopted son was also shown with duct tape on his thumb in a different video. But when her older daughter was sucking on her thumb in 2015, Micah said she hoped her daughter never stopped. I hope she never stops sucking her thumb. There were also vlogs where Micah talked about cutting back on money and resources what they the spent fuck? on Huxley's care. In one clip, she mentioned looking for a cheaper therapy for him while wearing what looked like a $6,000 Cartier bracelet. I'm excited to see what happens. We're gonna go to a different No, 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 no. This is fucked. Bro, you, you can tell they've just used the kid for views. That is fucked. That is fucked. Like, it's very hard for me to talk because I ain't got kids, right? So I'm like trying to think like from when I've had a dog. I know it's a bad example, but bro, if my dog's injured, price isn't even in question. It's getting the be best what I can afford. You know what I'm saying? Bro, you could clearly afford the 500 pound fucking treatment that your kid needs, bro. These videos raised concerns about Micah's parenting, making fans worry that Huxley might be mistreated when the cameras weren't rolling. People were so upset that they called the local sheriff to complain. After this controversy, um. YouTube suspended all of Micah and James's channels. An investigation was launched to ensure Huxley was safe. Huxley now lives with a new family and has changed his name. Micah's personal channel and the Stoffer Life channel were permanently deleted while- Yo, I feel bad that the kid just went through that. Like, I, I feel bad. 
Like, yeah, it's a kid. It's not going to really remember much when he grows up. But, like... That's shit, man. Micah's personal channel and the Stoffer Life channel were permanently deleted while James still continues to make... Yeah, true, 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 true. I have nieces and nephews. And if my niece and nephew... If my sister came up to me and said, Look, something's wrong with my niece. I wouldn't even say... I wouldn't even question the price of whatever they needed. You know what I mean? Go get them all right. Get the best what you can afford. Get You know what I mean? Well, what I can afford, get the best. Videos. But Micah isn't the only one whose content triggered an investigation. The next YouTube channel became the center of an FBI investigation. But this time for a oh, much shit. darker reason. The false prophet. Bro, that's crazy, man. Why people are like that, bro? Why are people actually like that, bro? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's finally with people that actually want him. Yo, why are people actually like that, bro? Like, li literally just for some views. Just for some views, bro. Crazy. The YouTube channel Sunshine Media Network International, or SMNI News, is one of the most controversial channels in YouTube history. For starters, the man behind the channel was telling everyone he was God. But if that sounds strange, brace yourself because it only gets weirder. Apollo Kibaloy was born and raised in a small rural town in the Philippines his entire life. He came from nothing and lived with little. That Let's is until him. 2005 when he announced to the world that he was chosen by God himself to be Christ on Earth. The title was supposedly rewarded to him for living a pure life. Pastor Apollo Quibaloy, the most successful of the world's self-labeled saviors. The official coming of the Son of God was in April 13, 2005. But years before then, in 1985, Apollo was the leader of a church called the Kingdom of Jesus Christ in the Philippines. A few years after the church was created, he created SMNI News, which aired on television. But he went on to create the SMNI YouTube channel, which was a huge part of his media empire, giving him exposure to billions of people. But there was a big problem. Apollo was saying some extreme things on YouTube. As far back as 2000, 2005, Apollo called himself the Messiah and the appointed son of God, basically implying he was God on earth. He made YouTube videos talking about how he was divine and tried to recruit more followers. I, I, but, but this is easy, easy solvable, bro. I'll go up to him and be like, okay, turn this into wine right now. There we go. There we go. If he does it, if you don't, you know what I mean? But Apollo had a lot of enemies and he often threatened and insulted them in his videos. Other videos showed him living in luxury while treating his followers like oh they were God. his servants. This may be the most beautiful spot in the Philippines and it's paid for by people who live on $2 a day. Wait, 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 people just, people, pe People believe him because he's saying it. Like, there's no proof. There's, there, there, there's nothing that he's done where people are like, holy shit, how did he do that? He's just saying it. And he, he, he gets to live here. Okay, I'm God. What now? What now? Do I get that? Well, no. Is no one going to test me? Fuck it. <laughs> Fuck it. <laughs> hey, people who said the bits. Hey, Amber, appreciate the bits, bro. Here's some money, bro. <laughs> I thought he might have done something in his life where people were like, holy shit, like, that's like, you know, impressive. So how do you justify your, your lifestyle? I mean, your watch could probably feed 100 families for a month. If this is not God's will for me to have these things I have, yeah. you can take it away. Despite all this, SMNI managed to avoid getting banned. That was until June 2023, when one man made it his mission to get the channel kicked off of YouTube. Okay. Ludahar from Some Ordinary Gamers tweeted at the YouTube team asking them to take down the news channel. He had a really good reason for this request. It turns out that Apollo Kibaloy, the man running the channel, was wanted by the FBI. <sighs> Why is this guy still allowed when he has an actual FBI warrant and he's what on the, the most fuck? wanted list? The tweet read, someone at Team YouTube has to help the feds or shut this account down. Yo, I reckon America wanted his ass. 
stick him in area 51 and actually test him they want to they want to do the tests on him priest is running a channel still reaching out to victims after his tweet got a couple thousand likes youtube decided to investigate and what they found was very disturbing the fbi accused apollo kibaloy for running a labor trafficking ring he was allegedly bringing church members to the u.s using fake visas once they arrived the members would roam the streets asking people to donate to a kids charity called the children's joy foundation but the charity was just a front all donations were going straight to Apollo's pockets. Besides the charity scam, Apollo was involved in other illegal activities like his fixation with selecting the perfect personal assistant. He would handpick female church members to be his personal assistants. These women were forced to work at his house during the night doing things that were far from normal assistant duties. The worst part, some of them were on the younger side. The FBI found Fuck. out about his crimes and in 2022, they added Apollo to their most wanted list. What really worried YouTube Holy was that Apollo's shit. SMNI channel, which had over 47,000 subscribers, was allegedly being used to recruit victims. Just one day after the tweet, YouTube permanently banned the SMNI news channel for breaking community guidelines. Although the channel was banned, Kibaloy managed to avoid arrest for about a year. But finally, in September 2024, the FBI caught him. And a year later, he has actually been arrested by the police, possibly facing extradition for running a literal cult. The next span channel seemed like- All right, that, that fucking escalated real quick. That fucking escalated real quick. Holy. He was the pre diddy diddy. It was making wholesome, family-friendly content, but behind the scenes, it was a house of horrors. The most evil YouTube family. In June 2012, Michelle Hobson created one of YouTube's most famous family channels. It was called Fantastic Adventures. Asia. And I'm Summer. And we're from Fantastic Adventures. Michelle was no ordinary mom. It's her. Chat is the one. It's the fucking one. This fucker. This fucker. We literally watched a 50 minute video on her. She is vile. Asia. And I'm Summer. And we're she from is Fantastic vile. Adventures. Michelle was no ordinary mom. She was a suburban mom with seven adopted kids, and she made videos documenting her family's daily life. People enjoyed watching the family's fun interactions, and by 2019, their channel Fantastic Adventures had 800,000 subscribers and 350 channels, million man. views. As Michelle got more subscribers on YouTube, she started making a lot of money. Like many influencers who suddenly get rich, Michelle became obsessed with maintaining her newfound wealth. But in doing so, she went from a caring mom to a monster. Michelle ran a tight ship to make sure the channel kept making money. She knew her kids were the reason for the channel's success, so she pulled them out of school to film more videos. Like other YouTubers, Michelle started using oh, scripts this, and that. rehearsals to perfect her content. Her kids had to memorize their lines and perform them just right. But like most kids, sometimes they didn't feel like doing it. When that happened, Michelle wasn't just strict, she was cruel. Instead Instead of giving them breaks or encouraging them, Michelle took a much harsher approach. If her kids refused to film or messed up a line, she would punish them. This included skipping meals, ice baths, or even using pepper spray. She also That's didn't fucked. give them enough attention. She didn't wash them, she didn't keep them in clean clothing, and for the little ones, she didn't change their diapers frequently. They kept posting videos and the money kept pouring in. Michelle was on top of the world, but it wasn't long before the truth behind Fantastic Adventures was revealed. In 2017, Michelle's neighbors noticed one of her kids running around the neighborhood in a weird way. They thought something wasn't right, so they called the Arizona Department of Child no, Safety. Wait, when the child welfare officers showed up, Michelle managed to talk her way out of it. This was the first time Child Services was alerted. Over the years, Child Services investigated Michelle nine times, but they never found any real proof of wrongdoing. But in 2019, Michelle finally nine times and you don't find anything. Nine times face the consequences of her actions. In addition to her seven adopted kids, Michelle had other adult children, including a biological daughter named Megan. Megan saw how badly her mom treated the others. So in March 2019, Megan called the local police to report her mother. When the officers stopped by the house for a welfare check, they immediately realized that Michelle was unfit to be a mother. The kids were in terrible shape. Michelle was arrested and charged with 30 felony counts of mistreatment. 
A woman who adopted seven children and used them to make social media videos is now under arrest. On March 19th, 2019, Michelle's mugshot was all over the news. Subscribers of Fantastic Adventures were shocked to find out the happy family they'd been watching was all an act. Once Michelle was arrested, YouTube immediately terminated the Fantastic Adventures channel. You have a son that records with you, Chase? No, Chase, they, I don't see any problem with like family channels. Like, it's your family, your kids, you can do what you want. As long as the kids are having fun and aren't being forced to do anything. You know what I'm saying? Then it's different, bro. Th these people are forcing the kids to basically work for them. To make their money, right? Michelle passed away in November 2019, just months after she was arrested. It's unclear where Michelle's Crazy kids are combo. now, but one thing's for sure. They're no longer in the house of horrors. These stories show us how people will do anything to achieve fame. They get yeah, lost. Yeah, and I highly doubt you're pepper spraying your kid. You know what I'm saying? The, the, these families are fucked. Chasing their dreams, but in reality, true success comes from the connections we build, not the attention we seek. Visual Venture. Damn, Make sure bro. you guys click. Holy, some people are fucked, dude.